Let's continue our discussion of the play framework using Scala. So we've gotten to the point where we have a website that has a login screen. Uh, it takes us to a task list. Our login screen uses a post request and sends some information through. That then does a redirect. So our login page does a post to this validate login post. We parse the body. We find a username and a password, and then we immediately redirect them to the task list. Okay. Now our task list currently just shows some tasks that are hard coded here. There's a few things that are missing for this to be a fully functioning application. And one of the first things we need to do is add a model. Okay. We can't really push this much further. For example, we can't have usernames with passwords that are validated until we have a list of usernames and passwords someplace. Similarly, we couldn't give them the appropriate tasks unless we're storing that somewhere. So at this point, we kind of need to take a, a break from writing the normal web stuff and go into our models package. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create, now note, the way I'm going to do this is not necessarily the ideal way to, to create a model, but given what we know right now, we have to get something in place so we can write the rest of the web app. So I'm going to task list model actually uh, in memory model. That way it'll be very easy for us to differentiate from one that we're going to write later, which will use a database. So this is a model that as the name implies is going to sit in memory. Of course, this means that if our server goes down for some reason, everything that all of our users have done is lost. This is not uh, persisted in, in any way, but that's fine for our current, uh, our current needs. Um, what I want to do here is I want to think of the methods that we have to do and then write kind of a minimal set of, of data structures that can implement them. So one of the things that we will need to do is to be able to validate a user. So given a username and a password, both of which are strings, I want to be able to give back a boolean that tells us whether or not they are a valid user. I also need to be able to, in order to have users, I need to be able to create a user. Once again, I will pass in a username and a password. Now we could have this return unit if it didn't give us anything back. I'm actually going to have it go ahead and give us a Boolean for whether or not it succeeded. Uh, if that username already exists, this would be a bit of a security hole if we allowed any random person to reassign your password by creating a new user with your username. So this is going to do a check to see if the user exists and if so, it'll return false and if not, it will create that user and return true. I also need the ability to get the tasks for a particular user. And this will come back with a sequence of strings. I need to be able to add a task to someone. So we take their username and we take the task, which for right now will just be a simple string as well. I, this one can return unit for the time being, uh, because we're the, that will be an operation that will always succeed in our model. And then I would need to be able to remove tasks. So I need to pass in a username And then the question is, how do we refer to the task itself? Uh, it could be based upon the string. Okay, so we could pass in the whole string and we would find that string and take it out. Because this is a sequence, we could also pass it in by index. Uh, looking forward to when this is done with a database, our, I, you could implement either one with a database. But with a database, you really should have indexed keys and so I'm going to pass in an index. OK, 
kind of to lay the foundation for that. So this is going to remove the task, uh, pass in an index. I'm actually going to return a Boolean here again. What if that index isn't valid? Uh, if they don't have that many tasks, it should return a false to let us know that, that something failed. Now, at least to get our login to work, all I need to be able to do is potentially create a user or validate a user. Actually, all I really need first off is the validate user and some data in here. Okay, so I'm going to start off. I want all of my data to be private. The, the controller should be accessing our model through these methods, not have direct access to the data itself. By doing that, it's very easy for us to change the implementation of these methods of, you know, by completely rewriting the way we, that we store things and the view, the, neither the controller nor the view has to change uh, if these methods can be kept intact. Now it turns out when we go to a database, these methods will be forced to change a little bit, uh, mainly because the database is going to be multi-threaded. Once again, topic we'll get to more later. And so these will all wind up being futures. Uh, instead of just a Boolean, we'll get a future of Boolean, etc. Okay, so in order to store my users in here, uh, if all I want is usernames and passwords associated with each other, I could do something like a mutable map. So mutable.map of string to string. So it is a map and I need the word val right here. It is a map that takes a username and gives you back a password. Okay. So validate user needs for that user to exist. So you might consider typing in something as easy as users sub username equals equals password. And that will work if username is in the map. It will crash if it isn't. Okay, and so we need this to work even when it isn't there. So how about we do a dot get on username. Now that returns to us an option of our string. And so then I'm going to map that to because if it has a value, it will be a password. So I want to either map that to checking if the password is a match. I put an underscore equals equals. You can't see it because of the red lines. And right now, because that's because of a type match, because I have an option of Boolean instead of a Boolean. Get or else false. Because if users doesn't contain that username, clearly they can't be validated, and we should give back false. So if the user doesn't exist, we give back false. If they do exist, we do a check to see if the password passed in matches what is stored in this mutable map. Okay. To test this to start with, I could go ahead and add one value into here. So now we can come back to our controller. Right now we always redirect this. But instead, I could say something like, if our task list in memory dot validate user of that username and password, if that is true, then we do that redirect else we need to redirect them back to the login page, which we happen to have code doing that right there. So now we have a login that will check to see if the user that has uh, what is typed in is accurate. Let's try this. So I'm going to go back to our login page. I'll refresh. It will do a compile again. And first I'm going to type in you know, John and a password. Hey, look, we came right back to the login. I didn't get any more feedback on that saying that it wasn't correct. We can uh, talk about how to do that later. <laughs> yes, ignore for this site. Um, it's funny how the little passwords I'm using for this aren't very secure. Uh, 
what if I use the correct name, but not the right password? Same behavior. Now let's try correct name, right password. Bingo. Okay, this took us to the task list, which is where we want to go. And we only got here by typing in the right username and, and password. I wonder how many times I'm going to have to click that before Chrome takes the message. Okay, so we have a login. We have the beginnings of a model. There's still quite a few methods that we need to add to this model. We also need to add functionality for that creating user. And then we can start really thinking about tasks and how to implement those. We'll come back and, back and do those in future videos.